Good morning all, it's post bag. This one is big and heavy with lots of cylindrical objects in it. And they are super capacitors. So these are uh, 2.5 volt, 700 farad super capacitors. There are six of them here. They're marked as Nippon Chemicon DL cap, DLA, 60 degrees centigrade, 2.5 volts, 700 farads, uh, positive. And let's look at the top. There's actually a serial number here, SN0219, and that is different on all of them, I assume. Well, we've got uh, 219 and 110. Now also there's this uh, rubber thing, it's a rubber circle or cylinder that goes part way down into the capacitor. I don't really know what that's for, is that some sort of vent maybe? Anyway, these are for the um, super capacitor powered Bluetooth speaker project. Uh, I bought six of these from one seller and there's another two coming from another seller, but let's have a look at these ones on eBay. So these are two pieces, 2.5 volts, 700 farad, automobile, car, super capacitor, and all that stuff. Uh, Nine pounds, 15. These were priced in pounds, but I still bought them uh, on eBay.com. So that's saying approximately $11.86, 99 pence shipping, even though these came from China. So that's uh, US 128 shipping approximately. <laughs> it's all a bit of a muddle, I'm afraid. And uh, these came, these are two pieces, and they came from 48 Express IT or IT. Should we do a quick uh, voltage check on one of these? And it's about 200 millivolts or thereabouts, so these are pretty much discharged. I want to test the capacitance of some of these supercapacitors. So I've got the uh, 2.5 volt 700 farad, 2.7 volt 500 farad, and this one is 100 farads at 2.7 volts. And I think I'm gonna do it with this uh, constant current electronic DC load, um, which can go down to one volt. So I'll probably do it at one amp to make the calculations easier. Uh, you can set the minimum voltage, which I think is one volt. Yeah, you can set, uh, I think that's where it stops discharging the device. So if it's a capacitor, it'll go from uh, 2.5 or 2.7 down to 1 volt and then using the equations for coulombs I think a coulomb is an amp second so if I discharge it at 1 amp uh, for a number of seconds um, a coulomb is also a farad volt so the drop in voltage should uh, indicate the amount of farads based on the time and the current if you see what I mean. Yeah, so here it is. If you look up Coulomb on Wikipedia, you can see that one Coulomb is one amp times one second, but also one Coulomb is one farad times one volt. So it should be relatively easy using uh, constant current and counting the seconds. I'm not sure whether that electronic DC load can count time uh, to do a conversion for the voltage drop and the farad capacitance of the capacitor. And the next one is this one. Let's cut this box nice and neatly so I can keep it and use it as storage. Let's see what's in here. Oh, that's going to be messy. Right, this is really quite annoying actually. This is um, one speaker, one 2.25 inch uh, speaker, and I ordered two. 8 ohms, 15 watts. Uh, on the box, it says, well, something 2.25 times 2, but there's only one in here. Really annoying. So this is also for the uh, Bluetooth speaker project. Let's just put uh, some little bits of polystyrene in there. And then I'm going to use a 1.5 volt AA cell, uh, this nice pink inner loop and see if we can get some movement on that uh, speaker cone. Let's try it. 1.2 volts into 8 ohms. That's not a huge amount of current, is it? Yeah. So, there we are. That speaker appears to work. That's fine. 
So on eBay, this item is 2.25 inch, 8 ohm, 15 watt, full range audio loudspeaker for Sony Bluetooth, whatever that means. Uh, they're $6.90 each, free shipping. Uh, I ordered two and I only got one. And this came from Woo814HY. So I'm going to now ask for a partial refund. And on to the next, uh, electronic components, no commercial value. Let's see what they are. And they're little 10 segment LED bar graphs. I'm pretty sure that there are 10 red ones amongst this lot and 10 blue. So I just wanted to try and do a quick test. Uh, see if I can light one of these segments up. I thought I could with a coin cell, but oh yes, there we go. So these are blue. Uh, run that along there. And let's see if I can find a red one. Yeah, this one is evidently red. Now you can get uh, eight segment LED bar graphs. I want these for the 8-bit uh, breadboard computer. So eight segment would make more sense. But I also want to convert these into a SIL LED array. So I kind of want nine pins. So I figured if I cut one pin off the end, use nine pins in one row, and then bend all the other pins on the other side down onto a SIL resistor, I can make a little... Um, eight-way single inline LED with built-in resistors that will plug straight into the uh, computer breadboard. So here's the RAM chip with the uh, eight-way dual inline switch um, pack so that you can program into the RAM 8-bit um, bytes. And the idea here is to replace these rows of LEDs which are a bit splayed out and a bit wobbly and uh, not sort of lining up exactly with the switches with these bar arrays uh, but I wanted it single in line so I'm going to cut a pin off leave the ninth pin intact but not use the pin on the other side so I won't use two of these LEDs uh, the other eight pins of course will plug straight into the breadboard and then the pins on the other side as I say will bend in and won't get used so there'll be a common ground uh, if you want to do it that way around. I think these are all common ground uh, so that'd be a common cathode and then all the anodes will be exposed uh, so that you can send these signals through these LEDs. Now on this RAM chip I think address lines A7 to A0 are all in line in sequence along this front edge so I can put uh, the red one if I choose to put the red one on that front edge so that'll that'll neatly show the address that's going into the RAM or at least the lower eight bits of that address and then another one I can put up here the eight data pins on this chip are sort of wrapped around this right hand end but once they're brought out onto the top of the switch then this can sit above the switch and it'll just be neater than using these individual discrete LEDs and I can uh, build some of these with their integral resistor packs and just have a lot more LEDs on this thing. So it seems that this one B10BS is the red one and this one KYXB10B uh, yeah 10 bit I suppose and B for blue anyway that's certainly the blue one okay let's have a look on eBay we have 10 pieces 10 segment digital red LED bar graph display ultra bright uh, $2.51 for those 10 pieces free shipping from Satisfy Electronics. And there's 10 pieces, 10 segment digital blue LED bar graph display, ultra bright, which has one product rating of only three stars. I can't quite imagine why. Probably more to do with the uh, shipping than the actual product. Anyway, 10 pieces for $3.42, free shipping also from Satisfy Electronics. Also for the breadboard computer, this one which is five integrated circuits so these are sony cxk 5814p-35s uh they're 24 pin i think pretty sure they're 24 pin was it 28 wait a minute let me count them uh six and six is 12 so yeah they're 24 pin and i'm hoping this is a direct plug-in replacement for this uh, TMM2016, uh, also generally known as a 6116, 
2K static RAM, 2K bytes of static RAM. I think this should be identical in function to this, but it's in this rather handy skinny package, a 300 mil package rather than the 600 mil package that the 6116 is normally supplied in. I have also ordered some uh, actual 6116 RAMs because I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything special about this 2016, but I don't think there is. I think the 6116 would work in exactly the same way. You just select an address, uh, put some data on this switch, press right, and in it goes. Incidentally, this switch is not debounced, so it's actually going to write to the chip lots of times, but it doesn't really matter whether you write the data once or 20 or 30 times, it's still going to write it. So these are five pieces CXK5814P-35L. I think 35 is the access time, and I actually think it's 35 nanoseconds. I don't think it's 350. I don't know, I'd have to check. Uh, this is a 2048 Word by 8-bit high-speed CMOS static RAM. So you get five pieces for $5.64 free shipping. And these came from Adele Parts 2010. Here's another one, which I think is breadboard computer and vocoder, I believe. Let's get these ICs out. Yeah, so these are for the uh, breadboard computer. These are 74HC574 CMOS chips in ordinary polystyrene foam. But I've got a feeling these are reasonably well protected, these modern chips against uh, static. So these are 8-bit uh, latches. I think it's an 8-bit... D-type flip-flop. The difference between the 574 and the 374 is just the pin arrangement. On these 574s, you've got uh, eight inputs. I can't remember whether they're on the bottom edge or the top edge, but on these eight pins, and the outputs on the opposite eight pins, and they're all in order. And then you've got VCC ground. Uh, is it output enable, I think, and clock? I think it's like that. And the other chips are 10 pieces of the TLO84, which is a quad uh, JFET op-amp, JFET input, so also a field effect transistor. Uh, again, really should be in conductive foam, I suppose. Uh, so yes, as I say, quad op-amps, and these are going to be for the Vocoder project. So the 10 pieces flip-flop integrated circuit IC DIP20, 20, 20 pin IC, 74HC574. Uh, very cheap, these $2.03 for 10 of them, free shipping. These came from CZB672-1960. And the 10 pieces, TL084CN, DIP14, a 14 pin IC, quad JFET input op-amp IC. Uh, these are 10 pieces for just 99 cents, so just 10 cents each. Free shipping, also CZB672-1960. So the HC574s are going to replace these 74LS374s on the part of the breadboard computer that actually does the transfer of data from one of these peripherals or uh, processing devices to another. Uh, so that's the 8-bit uh, D-type flip-flop. Now if I'm going to CMOS and the RAM chip that I showed earlier is TTL compatible, uh, the RAM drives these LS138s, and these are going to be CMOS. I really need an interfacing chip here. So the 138 is going to have to go HCT, so that it's a TTL-compatible input, which can take its signals from the RAM chip output, and drive these. Now, it's possible that it will work with just regular HC138, but I want to try and do this properly if I can. But there are some issues here. And uh, one of those issues is that I can only get HCT138s in this format, surface mount. So here they are, 10 pieces, uh, 74HCT138. Let's, let's take a closer look at one of these. There it is, 74HCT138. Now in order to put that on a breadboard, I'm going to have to get some sort of surface mount to dip converter PCB. I know it's a bit messy. 10 pieces, 74HCT138D, SOP16, SO16. And they're saying 3.9 millimeters width, new. A uh, bit of a non-specific image, that. 
$2.49 for 10 pieces, free shipping, and this came from ZQ8. Now the other chip on the 8-bit breadboard that has its pins in a higgledy-piggledy arrangement is this, the 74LS244. It's an 8-bit tri-state buffer, and so that's going to be addressed by the uh, 74HC541, which again has its pins all laid out in a nice neat inputs on one side and outputs on the other side arrangement. And uh, here they are, just about visible there, 74HC541. And on eBay, these are five pieces, SN 74HC541N, DIP 20, 20 pin packages, uh, octal buffer, line driver, three state or tri-state, $3.45 for five of these, free shipping, and these came from IC Market 2009. And uh, just a sneak preview of these boards, they haven't actually arrived yet, but these are the small PCBs that I'm going to use to convert those SOP 16s into dual inline 16s. I think the span across uh, the width here is, I think it's 500 mils. Uh, if you look at five there, that kind of makes a square. I hope it's 500 rather than 600 because that's more symmetrical. And so these are today's post bag items. These for the super capacitor powered Bluetooth speaker and all this lot for the 8-bit breadboard computer. And once again, I want to say a big thank you to uh, all the people who donate via Patreon who make uh, these post bag videos and the subsequent builds of all these gadgets. Uh, possible. And uh, I'm thinking about how I can implement a new reward scheme for those people who donate via Patreon. Uh, it's not quite there yet, but I'm uh, working on it. And if you'd like to become uh, a Patreon supporter, then this link here. A um, couple more videos up here if you'd like to watch more of my stuff. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, then click my face here. Cheerio!